Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Alright, pack one, pick one. Our rare is Temet. Playable cards, of course, gonna be good in the blue, white, and bomb decks, but it's not an insane first pick. Cast out, on the other hand, is pretty flexible, goes into any white deck, aggressive or controlling. And uh, the opportunity cost is pretty low to include it since you can always cycle it away. So that's probably the best card in the pack overall. And then at common, the best commons are probably the Scrapper and the Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs. And Aerial Guide is also pretty good in the aggressive blue decks. Just take a cast out. Alright, second pack. Dispossess, not really playable. They have a Compulsory Rest as another reasonable removal spell in white. Although there's also Ketra's Monument. This is one of the few monuments that is actually quite good and limited. Um, and it is pretty early in the draft, so it's not too difficult to take it and then draft a lot of creatures. So I think these are the two main considerations in this pack. Nothing else in a different color that jumps out. So what are we thinking? Rest for extra removal or monuments and go more in the creature direction, make some tokens. Ah, let's try monuments. And then third pick. It's a pretty late Lord of the Accursed. Black White Zombies is pretty fun and we're already in white, so yeah, why not? Other good cards include the Eternal and uh, the Desert would also be nice. Wander in Death is always okay. But overall, these packs haven't been too exciting. There's no real zombie card except for Unconventional Tactics, which is a reasonable card. Although not the best synergy with Monument, which wants us to play creatures. Uh, Crocodile, pretty good in green. Dauntless Avon, good with Exert creatures. Could go in a few different directions. Aven is probably the safest pick. Tactics might have the highest upside if we do end up in a very synergistic zombie deck. Although we haven't seen a ton of zombies so far. Well, let's try it. We did get past the Lord of the Accursed third pick, so maybe we'll get all the zombies. Uh, those who serve isn't my favorite zombie, but it is still a zombie and a creature for Okatra's Monument. So it might still be better than Desert here. Normally I would take the Desert, but I do need to make sure I pick up enough creatures and zombies in general. Uh, best card in the pack overall is probably the Green Cartouche. We did see Crocodile in the previous pack, now Green Cartouche. So maybe I should actually just pivot into green here, as the green seems pretty open, and not commit too much to the zombie theme which makes me regret taking Tactics over Avon last pack. Yeah, let's just take the Cartouche. Immediately reward it with a River Hoopoo. Alright, so we're pivoting into maybe a Band Control deck, which also makes me regret the Monument pick over the Removal spell. Uh, this pack is Kind of bad. I mean, there's a good red card. There's nothing in the band colors that I really want. Maybe the Naga or the Camel. Although it might be blue, green, splashing whites. Evolving Wilds versus Beneath the Sands, another puncturing blow goes by. So red-green is maybe the most open color combination here. Although we also got a third pick of Lord, so who knows. I'll take the Beneath the Sands, I think. Nothing here. Maybe the Seeker of Insight if we're in a blue-green. Prowler as a random blocker. Compelling arguments can also be a win condition if we don't have any other 
great uh, cards to close out the game to just mill the opponent out. But I guess I'll take a Prowler. Maybe we can main deck a Forsake, but I doubt it. So don't love how the first pack went. We kind of had to pivot pretty hard from black-white into blue-green almost. So I did miss out on a few good cards. But we'll see here. All right, the green trial seems nice when we have green cartouche. Desert holds probably the most flexible card. Can hope to pick up some deserts on the wheel. There's also Gustwalker as an aggressive white creature. Although we might again be blue green splash white, so I don't want any two mana white creatures necessarily. So how about we just take the Trial of Strength? Mm, driven to Despair. It's going to be difficult to cast both halves. But can be a decent card. And Gravedigger, probably the best card overall. Nice two for one. And in our colors, I guess there's an Aerial Guide, although we're not really an aggro deck. Impeccable timing against opposing aggro decks can be fine. It's between those two. Let's just take the guide. Alright, there's a couple decent cards here. Watchful Naga can be quite good with Aerial Guide. And if we have any other pump spells to get it through. So far we're a bit lacking in that department. I do like Shimmer Scale Drake quite a bit too. It's not too many removal spells that easily take care of a 3-4. Uh, Eternal also great in kind of a blue-red spells deck if you're more aggressive. Although we seem to be a little slower. So I'll take the Drake. And I should probably take a Riverwinder. Last time that we drafted a ramp deck we didn't get any of these late expensive cycling creatures like the Riverwinder or Sandworm, and we ended up without enough win conditions. So I should probably just take the Riverwinder now. Uh, Stalwart also okay. Steward even on the splash would be fine. And then of course Agony, great removal spell in black. Ooh, there we go, Sandworm. I think I prefer Sandworm over Drake, Vizier, Illumination and Brawler. Just make sure we have that expensive top end. I don't actually have much ramp. We passed a few ramp creatures in the first pack. But hopefully we can still pick up a few. Take my Evolving Wilds now for fixing. And a blue cartouche, perfect, to go with our green trial. So we're blue-green, splashing whites. Not sure if I'm playing the Monuments. Doesn't seem great in this deck. But I can splash cast out without too much effort. So yeah, the Monument could have been the two mana Pacifism. And then, did I miss out on anything else amazing? Uh, we don't actually have any Eternal Eyes or Embalm creatures yet, but who knows, we can maybe pick one up later. Wow, the Gus Walker wield, that's surprising. I mean, I'll probably just Rare Draft here, don't need another Naga. And the Desert is also potentially still playable. Nice graveyard hate against opposing embalm creatures. And a desert for any desert synergies. Probably want uh, Winds of Rebuke. We're a bit light on interaction.
Champion also may be splashable. If we end up low on playables. Alright, last pack. Ooh, that's a nice one. Trial of Knowledge. So we got both trials and both cartouches. Can hope to wheel a wall, illumination. And now we just want a bit more ramp. We've got the payoffs now with Sandworm, Riverwinder, and uh, the trials and cartouches. Just need to pick up a couple Naga Vitalists or Oasis Ritualists or more Hoopoos. Not really perfect in our deck, but it's still a good card. 2 mana 2-2 two, two, and we can Eternalize it later, plus we also have the Vizier of the Anointed to search it up. Uh, Sensor would also be great, Riverwinder would also be nice, and even the White Desert. But I think I'm taking Kenra. <laughs> How many Hoopoos is too many Hoopoos? I mean, there's nothing else I want in this pack, so I'll take it. And then Green Desert versus Beneath the Sands. Actually wouldn't mind a bit of ramp. And it's also nice with Seeker of Insights. And again, I don't have a ton of payoffs for the desert. So I think I'm taking the uh, Beneath the Sands. Nothing really here for me. Don't think I'm main decking Deliverance, even though it can be nice against the three mana artifacts. Not gonna play Floodwaters. I'll just get my 20 gems. Not a Beneath the Sands over Oracle. Oracle would be better if we had more Embalm creatures. Can also consider Avon on the splash. But uh, again, I don't mind more ramp. And now I'll take my Deserts. There's also White Cartouche on the splash. It is nice with two trials, but it doesn't seem like the card I need in this deck. And then we wield the wall, so that's nice. And I might main deck a Stinging Shots. We can be a bit soft to flying creatures. So I'm just splashing for cast out of Evolving Wilds and Triple Beneath the Sands. So I only really need one or two planes. And then I need to make one or two cuts here. Maybe the Stinging Shots. My wall isn't great since I only have the one Desert. Although I could always play the Scavenger Grounds. So let's see, could always cut one hoopoo. The Naga, also not amazing here without too many other deserts. But it's a curve filler. I might just play the Companion over the wall. Companion's also pretty nice with the Aerial Guide. Yeah, I don't know if I can really afford to cut hoopoo. I mean, our opponents are going to use premium removal to get rid of it, and then we just play another one. So I think I'll still play all of them. Could also be a 16 lander, because we have triple beneath the sands. And a couple cards we can always cycle if we're stuck on lands. Because flooding could be a concern, we don't have too many deserts in this deck. Yeah, I don't have a lot of win conditions, so I do have to be a little careful there. Need to avoid cycling too many of the expensive creatures. Maybe a river winder with a blue cartouche on it can win the game. With two Seekers I can maybe afford to still play 17 lands, because I can always discard my lands to the Seeker. And I have a decent amount of ways to enable it. That actually makes sense. So, I think that means I'm keeping double Seeker. And then, just got a Naga. Don't have any minus one, minus one counter synergy with a Prowler here. And I have double Seeker, triple Hoopoo. So I think Prowler can go. 
Alright, this seems okay. And then do I want one or two planes? If I randomly mill it to my Winds of Rebuke, I'll be in trouble. So maybe I should play two. I don't know, maybe two planes is still a bit much for one white card when I have Evolving Wilds and Triple Beneath. And I'll just have to take the risk of sometimes not being able to cast my cast out. I mean, Aerial Guide can still block opposing flyers and uh, can be quite nice with my more expensive creatures later in the game. Definitely not at its best in the deck. But turn 2 Companion, turn 3 Aerial Guide can also be pretty nice against uh, slower decks. Alright, and then 7 blue sources, 8 green sources, plus Evolving Wilds. Because then if we have green mana for Beneath the Sands, we can get blue mana as well. Seems fine. And then Vizier plus Kenra as the only Embalm creature. Or I should say Eternalize. Alright, no blue mana. And I drew both the Kenra and the Vizier in the same hand. Yeah, this is a little too awkward. Alright, this is better. And then do I take the gamble of bottoming the stinging shots? I think I do. We've got two flyers, so we should be able to block most flying creatures here. Decisions, decisions. Don't really want to cycle Drake. I could cycle Beneath the Sands. I think I just play Seeker and really hope to draw a land next turn that comes into play untapped. And if we don't, I'll cycle the Beneath the Sands. But if we can actually cast Beneath and activate Seeker, that'll be nice. Alright, perfect. could get double green, or I could just get my planes. Let's get the planes. And then I'm not gonna say no to land 5. I kinda don't mind casting beneath. Like, maybe not next turn, because next turn I can play Drake. But it still lets me loot with the Seeker, and it gives me extra lands for the Hoopoo. No double green, so we can go beneath plus Kenra. Opponent so far is desertless, so they can't use the wall. Luckily, it's a May ability, so they don't have to destroy their own wall. So I don't hate casting Beneath the Sands. Get an extra Forests. Activate Seeker. And then we'll play Kenra, and next turn I can play and activate Hoopoo. Definitely happy to trade Kenra for Manglehorn. I probably just eternalize Kenra here to keep up the pressure. 
and then I'll probably target the Seeker of Insight to diversify in case they want to uh, final death or final reward the uh, Drake. And if they want to jump with the wall, that's fine by me. So we got those pump spells out of the way. Alright, there's a sandworm. That's a big one. Although we've got our own sandworm. Probably just want a cartouche here. That seems good. So I can hit for eight. Probably better to keep cast out at instant speed. In case they try and maybe play a fight spell, we can punish them. So I can cast out the sandworm, wait for them to maybe use the other half. They get to draw a card. Can they find an answer? Alright, sort of. That keeps him in the game for a turn. Although they'll have to chum block, so it's not gonna be pretty. Got to play the hoopoo for the finishing blow here. See, our opponent concedes as soon as we play River Hoopoo. Coincidence? I think not. On the play with uh, keepable hands. Probably won't be cycling the Riverwinder since we need it as a finisher. Yeah, I could play Aerial Guide here. Don't know if it's better than Beneath the Sands. Maybe it is. Because I don't really have anything to ramp into with Beneath here. And that gives me an extra turn of drawing a card I maybe want to discard with a Seeker. Because right now lands are still useful to eventually play Riverwinder. So I could Cartouche with a Seeker. It's a pretty clean answer. Or I can play Vizier. Put Kenra in the graveyard and wait a turn. Opponent probably has to exert to get past my Vizier. Yeah, we'll just play Vizier. And then Beneath the Sands can grab another Forests. Or three first ranking brawler, no attacks. So Cartouche on Vizier is looking good. And then I can still loot with a Seeker. All 
All right, what do I discard? I mean, between Sandworm, Riverwinder, and Canara Eternalize, I have multiple expensive things I can do. So maybe I'm supposed to discard one of the big things I have in hand. And what's better between Riverwinder and Sandworm? Probably Sandworm is better against Socatra's Monuments. So we'll discard Riverwinder. And then hit for five. And probably not going to cycle anything. Although I guess if I cycle beneath the sands and draw into a forest, I could eternalize Kenra on curve, which would be nice. Yeah, I guess it's probably still worth it. I have a lot of forests I could draw. And Hoopoos, apparently. Alright, so now I slightly regret cycling, but so it goes. I'm okay trading for the elites. Didn't think I want to cycle the sandworm, otherwise I might be a little bit light on wind conditions. Although my point is down to 5 in the meantime. Takes out Aerial Guide. Sadly drew another island. So... Could attack for Vizier to trade it for the Elite. Which wouldn't be a terrible trade. But I kind of want to wait until we can Eternalize Kenra first. So... Yeah, I could draw now with a Hoopoo in case I draw Evolving Wilds. So I can still get green mana. Otherwise it's probably better to just keep up my mana, represent some interaction and then end of turn draw with a Hoopoo. I guess also the green desert that comes into play tapped. So I do have two green sources that come into play tapped. So those are both reasons to main phase the Hoopoo. My green mana seems to be missing. There's my desert, Seeker can go. And then we can play the desert, play companion. Probably better than another Hoopoo. And I can also loot with a Seeker to get rid of a land. And we'll pass. Can potentially also eternalize the Kenra pumping the Hoopoo, forcing the opponent to jump with the Elite. And which is why, of course, my opponent had to compulsory rest. Not actually a great answer to the Hoopoo's activated ability. Can still use that here. So maybe this was a reason to play the second Hoopoo over the Companion. But forcing the opponent to make this play also isn't bad for us. Now I can play Sandworm. If I eternalize Kenra, this becomes a 7-9. Which they can still take out by blocking with everyone. Although we would be taking out Champion and Stalwarts. So it's definitely a close call here. We'll make him deal with uh, Sandworm first. And then we still have all these Hoopoos to draw us extra cards if the game does drag out. To hopefully find some more flying creatures. 
yeah, the 1-1 one -one tokens can block the Sandworm, so they're going to be forced to hold back Elite or Champion if they don't have an answer for the Worm. That's why we capped the Sandworm over the Riverwinder all the way at the start of the game. Ooh, appeal to authority. This is going to hurt. Are we just dead here? Yeah, that card is scary. Represents a ton of damage out of nowhere. Of course, great with the monuments. Their creatures have Vigilance, so they can exert for free. The champion tramples. So let's say I block like this. I'm taking 24, so I'm just dead. If I block like this, I'm taking uh, 6, 10, 22, I'm still dead. If I jump like this, I'm still taking... 9 trample, 13, how many tokens is this for? So 12 plus 9 is still 21. So I'm just dead on board here no matter what. Alright, cool. All right, on the play. Sure. Okay, maybe cycle one beneath the sands. I could go Seeker plus Winds of Rebuke, but the Seeker doesn't profitably block the Brawler. So that seems kind of medium. Could leave back Aerial Guides and then trade. Although Aerial Guide will be nice once we get the Riverwinder down. So I don't hate just casting beneath, taking a hit from Brawler. They probably don't exert. and try to ramp into Riverwinder as soon as possible. Alright, so this turn I can... Seeker, keep up Rebuke. Can't really afford to attack anymore. And then that exerts, so I'll block Vizier, force them to cycle, and then bounce Vizier once they do cycle. Otherwise, I'm fine with the trade. Sadly, did mill Sandworm. Alright, that's nice. Although probably still playing Riverwinder. Winder. 
I guess a, a playing the Vizier would have played around countervailing winds. And now we've got a Flying Riverwinder to get in for 7. Vizier can put Canra in the graveyard. And we even get to keep up countervailing winds. Six cards in graveyard, so nice and full. Hit for five. Next turn, can pump the aerial guide. They could have the one mana trick, which we can counter. So the Sphinx could also potentially shrink down the Canra in response to the trigger, so it doesn't pump as much. Got to keep that in mind. I see. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. And then I guess I could loot. Although there's nothing positive to be gained from looting. Because the Kenra's already in the graveyard. So it's gonna just put a card from the top of my deck into my graveyard. I don't think that's good for me. Unless I knew for a fact what the top card was. Which I don't. Alright, so we're gonna have a nice turn here. Point's gonna be forced to chum block with the Sphinx. They're going to take 5, and then the skies are clear for Aerial Guide. Although we are at 12, so we do have to be a little careful that we don't die on the way back. I'm okay chomping with Seeker, although I can probably chomp Serpents. This way I can still draw into a Hoopoo and play it. Let's see if we can find an answer. Although they would be chumping the Riverwinder right now. And cast out is perfect. Alright, we did it. Sure. Choosing which 2-drop to play. We can go a Seeker into Beneath the Sands and loot with the Seeker.
could also leave the Seeker back on defense. Although it kind of feels like looting might be better here. No land is good. So what do I keep? I mean, Stinging Shot presumably is going to be pretty good this game. Vizier can get Canara, so that's also nice. So it's between, like, Aerial Guide and Cartouche. Maybe Cartouche on Riverwinder is just better than Aerial Guide, as it's more reliable. Plus, we could also draw one of our Trials. So only three minus one minus one counters. There's a Hoopoo. So I can go Vizier. Keep up stinging shots. Honestly, am I just stinging shot right now? And then I can loot with a Seeker. Because I do want to find another land. I mean, cast out's pretty good too. Probably ditch the cartouche now. Don't hate Hoopoo plus cast out. Probably getting rid of the Magmaroth, but we'll wait and see what our opponent does first. I'll take the three. Right, I guess can ride this. Mm, they're probably chumping here. I'll leave the 1 3 on defense, I think. And then we've got our two 7 drops in hand, so drawing a land would be nice. Yeah, this Eternal's done quite a bit of damage. It also has a Flicked, so blocking it isn't the best idea. Uh, I guess it works. Or I could draw with a Hoopoo. Got a few options. But if I cartouche, I can also activate the Seeker, so I'm pretty likely to draw land for next turn. And we'll make the Hoopoo super powerful. So between Riverwinder and Sandworm, what's better against blue-red spells? My guess is Riverwinder is better. They might have another thirst to answer the Sandworm. Sure. No thanks. Mm, 
They could play a blue cartouche on the Eternal and fly over, but then I wouldn't be blocking with Hoopoo anyway, so might as well attack. And the Seeker attack. Uh, sure. And next turn I can start gaining life, maybe. Can probably still afford to play out one land. And then, happy enough keeping the Riverwinder on defense, just get in with the Hoopoo. Could have the backup hoopoo. Could activate firsts, maybe that's better. Well, I guess we'll try it. And then I can still loot with the Seeker. It's actually close here. Like, am I gonna hold the desert or do I play out my land anyway? Because then I can maybe double Hoopoo activation. 13 cards left, still have... I guess no cartouches left. And not too many win conditions, I guess the 3-4 Drake still, that's about it. Um, yeah, I'll discard the forest and then hold the desert, I guess. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. Alrighty, and no blue. This hand would have been pretty good with Island over Plains. Still get to cycle beneath the sands, maybe. And then cast beneath to get my Island. It's not ideal on the draw if our opponent's drafting an aggressive deck. I might just be too far behind, but I think I still keep it. Next turn, probably grabbing a second forest. Yeah, I do want to develop my mana. Seems better than playing Aerial Guide for now. And I guess now that we drew the desert, I'm okay getting an island. And I think I just discard the Aerial Guide. It's not super impactful. Alright, Ritualist could be a problem. I don't really want to use Cast Out, but I could maybe just bounce it with the Winds. And then activate Seeker, hope to draw an untap land so I can play beneath the sands. If not, I might just play the desert and cycle the beneath the sands. One hoopoo gone, two remain. Alright, so that didn't pan out. Maybe I just discard the beneath the sands, play desert, and I have the option of cycling winds, or I can hold it. Because it is active now.
opponent for color. I see, I see. Also, we milled prepare to fight, I just noticed. And a Hornet Queen. Oh boy. Glad we milled a Hornet Queen. Think I hold the wins for now. Although if I just pass with a bunch of mana up, my opponent can start using Hoopoo instead of playing stuff. And this is also an instance, so... It's gonna be awkward to actually use the countervailing winds. If I draw a land, I still can play the worm. Can go trial plus keep up winds, so the mana costs are a little awkward here. Yeah, let's just take our draw step. And then I guess I'll just pass a turn with winds up, and if they play something huge, I can always decide to cast out end of turn. Or I can cast out to Hoopoo. So best case scenario, they play something expensive. Worst case, they just pass a turn. Alright, so now what? And do we cast out the Hoopoo? Sure. If they activate Hoopoo, then they can't use Mind, so they're missing out on a card to try and get a bit more value, which they are going to. Hovering over the Hoopoo, consigned to bounce it, so they really want to save it here. Alright, I think I just slammed down the worm. Or I could go trial keep up winds, but then when am I ever going to play this sandworm? Yeah, I mean, I'm probably not going to win with just a sandworm. But there's too many things I need to counter here. I need to counter the Mind Rot, the Hoopoo. Something expensive they might have in hand. I think I'm just gonna be proactive and play my own Sandworm here. Which is almost, uh, I guess it is a three turn clock once I hit them for one. So if they want to take a turn off making me discard two without adding anything to the boards, Go for it. Oh yes. Would have been even better with a trial in play but I'll take it. Still ramping. They can draw two end of turn. It's gonna be a Sphinx instead. Not bad, not bad. I guess I should loot with the Seeker because we have a Kenra I could randomly mill. Vizier would have grabbed the Kenra in the graveyard. All right, opponent stepped out. And they're gonna have to chum the sandworm with the Sphinx and still die. If 
for a single green. There's not much they can have. Could be one mana cycling card, maybe. Nope. And we've got a beauty of a hand. Like an eternal. No attacks. They probably have a way to enable prowess. Fine trading for the 4 2. And drawing planes for cast out is pretty nice. Yeah, probably just play planes, pass a turn, see what happens. Most likely cast out Magmaroth. And then the turn after we can maybe Cartouche plus Rebuke or activate Hoopoo. Open fire, blur of blades. All right. Hopefully no sensor. I mean, I could also go for the winds of rebuke here. It's just less mana efficient. Sensor would be bad though. All right, that's not so bad. I guess I could also leave the 4-2 on defense since I technically don't mind trading it. I guess we'll start here. But it doesn't seem like they're very likely to have another non-creature spell here since they used Blur of Blades that didn't even kill the Hoopoo just to Enable prowess. And then we'll pass. No attacks. Do I rebuke the eternal? Don't have to. Let's just chill. Play trial. Still keep up. Rebuke. And now that that's resolved, I think I'm okay attacking. Ooh, that's a good one. Sadly, can't countervailing winds counter it. But I can maybe rebuke whatever they try and kill, if it's the Hoopoo. It's a 5-3. Makes more sense. Sure. Could also rebuke Cartouche here, which is actually not a terrible play, because I would get a Cartouche back and then eventually Trial. Ooh, they've got their own Cartouche. Picks up Trial again. Can block, so I'm taking five. And now my Cartouche would just be a trade. But I probably still make that trade, because this is just going to kill my thing, but then they kill the Hoopoo. 
Can I countervailing winds for three? Um, I guess I will be able to, because Cartouche will go to the graveyard. So yeah, let's hit for four. Could also replay the trial instead of holding up countervailing winds. But I kind of like keeping up the counter spell here. Four cards in graveyard. So if they go land, trial, so be it. Or I can just play my own trial. But at this point they're more likely to kill the Hoopoo than the 4-2. And I can still cycle the sands if I don't need to counter. And actually exiling the trials so they can pick it back up with another cartouche seems important. Oh yes. We're hoopoo flooded, that's a good thing. So I think I main phase activate, because then if I draw land, I can still play trial, and if not, I'll just play another hoopoo. And our opponent concedes, awesome. Well, we had a rocky start, but the Hoopoos went all the way, and we made it. Seven wins and Mythic. Beautiful. And a nice number, 151. Well, let's crack some packs. Glorybound initiates. This card even saw a little bit of standard play back when uh, Amon Cat was in standard. Definitely a nice aggressive 2 drop, especially if you've got some synergies to keep it attacking. Lord of Extinction. Now, if this one wasn't in standard, if memory serves, but uh, could be a fun build around for historic. Has some interesting applications. Usually artifacts don't really interact with enchantments all that much. So that's kind of a, a unique space that we can explore with Mirage Mirror. Had an opponent in draft copy Sandworm Convergence at some point. That's pretty strong. Ooh, the Scarab God. Probably one of the best rares you can open for limited, but also very strong in constructed. Especially now that Field of the Dead is gone, maybe slower decks playing Scarab God can uh, once again take over. Torment of Hailfire, also a fun one. Definitely a card that I initially underestimated. Because typically speaking, these Punisher effects that give the opponent a choice aren't very good. But with Torment of Hailfire, all the options are bad for the opponent, especially if you can cast this for a lot of mana. can sometimes just end the game without the opponent being able to do anything about it. So the card's actually not bad, especially in a ramp deck. And the rest in peace. Rest in peace, my wild cards. I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.